So there are a few pieces of vocabulary that are a little complicated and that uh, to some extent aren't explained perfectly in the readings. So we want to go over those so we understand what's going on. We're going to cover three pieces of vocabulary, intentionality, syntax, and semantics. So starting first with intentionality, if you go in the Searle article, uh, you'll notice the first time intentionality shows up. Uh, let's find out. So this is on page 419, kind of in the upper left. He says, uh, he's talking about stuff. The reason we do make these attributions is quite interesting, and it has to do with the fact that in artifacts we extend our own intentionality. Uh, and note three. And then intentionality shows up all throughout the rest of the article, uh, like 10 or 11, 13, 14 times. So let's figure out what intentionality means. The best place to go is when he first uses the word and then explains it. So he says, intentionality is by definition, by definition, that feature of certain mental states by which they are directed at or about objects and states of affairs in the world. Thus, beliefs, desires, and intentions are intentional states. Undirected forms of anxiety and depression are not. For further discussion, see Searle, 1979 C. So the thought is that um, beliefs, desires, and intentions are sort of about things. So when I say you have a belief, that's not sort of fully describing it. It's a belief about something. So you believe about the weather that it is not raining, or you believe about the cat that it has fur, or you believe something about something. So the belief is directed at the object of the belief. Uh, it's sort of focused on something. Similarly for a desire. When you have a desire, it's not just this vague, unspecified thing. It's a desire for something. It's a desire about something. So if I desire that everybody give me 20 rupees, that's a desire about uh, people giving me 20 rupees. If I desire uh, to have uh, samosas for lunch, that's a desire about what I have for lunch. So it's directed to something. It's focused on something. Uh, similarly, intentions. So if I intend to uh, cook some rice tomorrow, then that's an intention about something. I don't just have broad, unspecified intentions. It's focused, it's about something. And so um, the thought is that intentionality is a feature of mental states, not all mental states. So as he points out, anxiety, depression, these aren't always about things. So um, you can have anxiety about something. So you can be anxious about an upcoming test, but as he puts it, undirected forms of anxiety and depression, just anxiousness, not about anything in specific, I'm just anxious, or depression, not about anything in specific, but just depression. Those are not about anything. Those are not directed at anything. So those are mental states that aren't directed or about anything. But other mental states are directed, are about things. And so when I said earlier in one of the earlier videos that what we're looking at is sort of understanding, that's the kind of consciousness we're interested in. Understanding is about something. It's a sort of intentional state, so it's not like you just understand. What you understand is something specific, so you understand what I mean when I speak in English, or you understand how to build uh, something out of wood. So understanding is uh, features intentionality. So when he's talking about intentionality throughout the article, and when other articles are talking about intentionality, that's kind of a synonym or a stand-in for understanding. So we ask if AI can have intentionality, that's asking sort of whether AI can understand. And in fact, if you look at footnote two right here, he says understanding implies both the possession of mental or intentional states and the truth of these states. So the thought is that uh, the mental states we're interested in are intentional states, and to understand you have to have these sort of mental states. So to really understand something, that's to have an intentional mental state. So that's intentionality. Next up are syntax and semantics. So uh, syntax only shows up twice in the article uh, along with semantics in the same place, and he uses it uh, in the same way both times. So Searle is arguing that uh, what the robot is doing, what the AI is doing, what the person inside the Chinese room is doing, is just messing around with symbols. They don't understand the symbols. They have no understanding, so they lack a certain sort of mental state. So AI can never be conscious in the sense of having understanding. And so what you're doing when you're uh, manipulating symbols, you sort of get one symbol in and you pair it up with some other symbols and you put those symbols out. He calls that syntax. So he says in linguistic jargon, jargon, they have only a syntax. So syntax 
The thought is uh, sort of linguistically speaking, it has to do with the structure of language. It has to do with sort of the order that symbols come in and how uh, the rules of the language fit together, the various symbols and things like that. And the thought is that syntax is part of a language. To understand the language, you have to know the syntax. You have to know the grammar rules about where the noun goes, where the verb goes, how to conjugate nouns, things like that. But syntax is not the entirety of the language. The language also has what we call a semantics. And so semantics is what the words mean. So I can know the syntax of a language, which is how to put all the words in the right order and form a sentence. But I also need the semantics of the language, which is uh, understanding what the words mean in order to understand the language. And Searle argues that at best, AI is going to have syntax. It can do the symbol manipulation. It can put out words in the right order when it receives some words. But it can't understand the words that it's putting out. It doesn't have semantics. It doesn't have definitions for the words. So syntax is sort of uh, the logical relations between the sort of words that you're using and how the grammar works. And then semantics is understanding the meaning or the definition of the term. So that's intentionality, syntax, and semantics. And as we'll see in uh, Bowdoin, these are going to be important, but they're already important sort of in Searle. They're also important in Church Linage. Important words.